Hello, crypto family and token Tricks family and Moon Mission family. Welcome to a new episode of Moon Mission. In today's episode, we're going to, to delve deep into the weeds and actually launch a DAO. Yes, a DAO. I've talked about how I believe DAOs, decentralized autonomous organizations, are the next trend in crypto. I've done a deep dive video onto why that is, but now we're actually going to execute and launch an investment DAO, not financial advice. But prior to that, let's begin at the top. This is going to be a legal DAO, a legally licensed entity in the US. Now, what region should we license a DAO? Well, we have two options. In the past, we've talked about a Delaware LLC, and I did talk about how I've filed a legal Delaware LLC. But after some research with our team and speaking to, to some lawyers, I've learned that, hey, you know what? I probably messed up. There's a better option than, Del than Delaware. Now, I use Delaware because we used Open Law, which is a platform for launching DAO and having smart contracts that are tied to a legal entity. But there's a better option, Wyoming, launching a Wyoming DAO. So we'll go through both options, and I'll tell you why both options could be beneficial for you or not. Right? But prior to doing that, let's go through why, at a high level, Delaware DAOs are not good, in my opinion. Right? And why Wyoming, I think, is the best region for launching a DAO. All right, so the first thing, let's begin with Delaware. So Delaware was done through Open Law, LAO, which stands for Limited Autonomous Organization. Right? So this is a Delaware LLC structure, and it is member managed, meaning that you have to have less than 100 investors in it, and they have to pass accreditation. Right? So essentially, you have 99 US-based investors. Uh, the rights and obligations of members are set forth in the operating agreement and the Delaware Limited Liability Act. Pretty standard, right? Now, Open Law, the platform, which we'll go through, is the administrator for the DAO. And they partner with a, an actual licensing authority, basically a registered agent and all that other stuff, right? And they receive fees for creating and maintaining the software. And the fees go towards ongoing software development and other legal costs. Now, in order to be a member, right, here are the requirements. You must submit information to verify the identity for AML, KYC, and OFAC. Right, it's so basically anti-money laundering, uh, know your customer, and OFAC stands for something else, I forget. But basically, you have to know who you are. Right? And, his, and his the, this stands for both DAOs. But basically, if you're launching a DAO, DAO a legal investment DAO in the US, right, the investors, the, the members of that DAO, essentially must be high net worth, must be rich. Right? And for accreditation in the US, if you're single, you have to have more than 200K annual income, or if, ma if married and filing jointly with a spouse, you have to have an income of 300K or more a year, or a net worth, excluding your permanent residence, I believe, for over a million. And so basically, you have to be a high net worth. And the voting rights in this DAO are based on a number of units each member holds. Now, with a DAO, you also have the option to quit, right? That's why there's no central authority, right? People join the DAO, and they can leave whenever they want. This is called rage quitting. Right, so members are not obligated to participate in any in, some, in, in, in any proposal, basically. Right. So let's say somebody, if we're doing an investment syndicate, right, this is basically a legal way to do an, a syndicate with high net, net worth investors to invest in crypto. Right. But let's say some for some reason the DAO decides as a whole through voting to invest in, the, in this project, and you, you don't like that, you can rage quit, take your funds, and leave. And members can also be removed using uh, voting essentially, right? So the advantages of Open Law, the platform, uh, is more for developers. Uh, you can go through and customize the contracts and all that stuff, and they serve as the administrator. Right? So let's go through, and I'll show you how I created a Delaware DAO through Open Law. Okay, so basically, I came to OpenLaw.io. This is their website, and I just said, "Learn more." So learn more has their documentation in terms of how to do everything here, right? Uh, the best place to start to, to just go through everything is beginner's guide. And it goes through and shows you how they go through creating contracts and templates. Now, I'm a pretty technical person, but this was still somewhat confusing and not my preferred method of choice. So um, if you come here and go to play around, you can actually uh, sign in. Okay, so now I've signed in here with my account, and they have different templates, right? So you come here, and you, 
the template I found was uh, Delaware DAO or Delaware LLC. Yeah, here we go. Right. Now I have to find the exact one I used. Okay, so if we go to here, Delaware LLC, you, you can basically go through here and fill out all this information. And using smart contracts on the blockchain, on the Ethereum blockchain, it is creating a DAO, right? So in this case, we're creating one, forming Onshore LLC. We'll say yes, company information. We'll, we can call this um, to the moon and beyond DAO. Address, we can just say one, two, three, moon. Okay, moon street in, in Kansas. Is that Kansas City? We're just, whatever that, that is. Anyway, number info, we can say Ian, and you can say Ian. I'm not filling out information right now, but basically you go through here, you say tokenizing LLC membership interests. You put in the token name, we call this moon, the symbol, sorry. Hold on. Yeah, we'll call this moon token, symbol is moon. Units, we'll say 100. And then you put in the date, we'll put in today. You scroll down and then you basically submit this, right? So you say send contract. And what happens is it sends you an email with uh, through their administrator, a legal email, and you have to docusign that document, right? Then you have to wait and then they'll sign it as well. The, the, the admin will sign that as well. Register the, the, the LLC in Delaware. And then after a week or two, because uh, there's a slight delay based on talking to them, they told me, because my DAO has been filed, but I'm still waiting on the confirmation from the state of Delaware. Right? This is for the Delaware DAO. But right now there's a backlog with the holiday, holiday season. It's taking a while. But basically once you do that, you have officially launched a DAO. Okay? Now, why did, have I chosen not to proceed with my Delaware DAO? And why am I opting for Wyoming? Well, let's go back here to my notes. And thank you, uh, Nancy, for putting these notes together. Nancy is the chief of staff for TM Ventures. She went through and did all this research. So Wyoming DAO, right? So a DAO in Wyoming must be organized as a Wyoming LLC, similar to Delaware, right? And we have two types of DAOs in Wyoming, right? We have member managed DAOs, which is similar to a member managed LLC, which is what we have in Delaware. And you also have algorithmically managed. Now, these are not well defined. And the smart contract system must be operational at the time of filing, meaning that you have to have a smart contract. So this is what I'm actually going to be doing myself. Right? And then third, here are the requirements for DAO LLC in Wyoming. You have to have a registered agent in Wyoming, and you have to have the name DAO or LAO, Limited Autonomous Organization or DAO LLC in the name of the DAO, right? And then the articles of organization must state that the LLC is a DAO pursuant to all this, right? So this, our team will be doing this with our legal, with our attorney who will go through and help us with filing this. So right now I haven't seen a platform like Open Law for for Wyoming. Actually, you know what? Let me, I didn't look think about this, but do we have Wyoming? Okay, I see a operating agreement, but I don't see. Okay, this is a Wyoming LLC. Yeah, so Open Law I think only does Delaware, not Wyoming. But anyway, back to this. So basically, this should be in the Articles of Organization, right? And then it's presumed to be a member managed unless defined as algorithmically managed in the Articles of, of Organization. And this stuff. Smart contracts prevail in any conflict with the Articles of Organization. Basically, code is law and automatically dissolves it if it fails to approve any proposals or take any actions for one year. So basically, there's an expiration date if it's, if it's inactive. It's governed by majority of voter membership interests. That's pretty standard. Calculated by two, one of two methods, dividing members' contributions of digital assets to the DAO, right? divided by the total amount of digital assets that it owns, or if members don't add anything to the DAO in terms of digital assets, to become a member, one has membership interest and is entitled to one vote. 
Okay, so the formation process for Dow in Wyoming, set up a Wyoming LLC that's designated as Dow in, in the title, get a registered agent, file the articles of organization with the state of Wyoming, create an operating agreement, obtain an, an EIN, basically a tax ID for the business. Right? Now, the reason why, why Wyoming makes more sense over Delaware, you can call yourself a Dow rather than a Dow LLC. Right, so first of all, it's naming convention, right? With Wy with Wyoming, you, our DAO, for example, we had what to the moon and beyond DAO, that works. In Delaware, we have to add to the moon and beyond DAO LLC, not not that great, right? Then you have the option to have everything be managed algorithmically uh, in Wyoming, and third, third, you have better privacy in Wyoming. So from our research, obviously, talk to an attorney. It's not legal advice. In Wyoming, you can be anonymous when creating a DAO. A legal DAO can be anonymous. What do I mean by that? So, for example, when creating the DAO with Open Law for Delaware, I had to docu-sign my name on there for the DAO. Right now, obviously, no one's doing any, any, anything bad per se. But if you want total privacy and to be anonymous for a DAO, you're better off doing it in Wyoming. Right in Wyoming. Your attorney and the registered agent can be the only people on any paperwork. So you can legally form a DAO and nobody will know who you are. That is powerful, right? And with great power comes great responsibility, as the code goes, right? And then last but not least, you have fewer taxes in Wyoming, right? So if you're tax conscious and privacy conscious, Wyoming makes the most sense. Right, so that is the process I'm going through. As I mentioned, I plan to launch an investment DAO. So, what platform do I use? Right, from doing research, I've talked about it before in the past, DAO House, Colony, Boardroom, uh, but DAO House, in my opinion, is the best platform to go with. Right, so it's D A O H A U S dot club. And the reason why I chose DAO House, uh, I'll go through that. If we go through. We'll say open app. I'm just connected to, to my MetaMask. Okay, all right. So here it shows you different types of DAOs available. So if we go to explore. Okay, all right. So this shows you all the different DAOs available on DAO House. So we actually have uh, the Lao here being tracked. We have MetaCartel Ventures, which is a f famous uh, investment syndicate DAO. Now I'm trying to launch something similar to them. Right, and as you, see, if we go here, we can see all their proposals, the active members, the shares, the loot, and all that. Right, if we go to view proposals, we have all the different funding proposals they have. And right? we see about eight hours ago, uh, Victor submitted a funding proposal. So if you look at this, okay. So following on the on the decision to merge XDAI with Gnosis, we should swap our stake for GNL. And this is him, this is the recipient. Okay, but if we go to, I don't want to go here, let's go back. So back to explore. Okay, so you see there's there are lots of different DAOs available, right? Now, <clears throat> to launch a DAO, you come here, <clears throat> you go to summon, and these are the types of DAOs we can launch using DAO House. Right. DAO House is basically an operating system, an OS, to manage and launch your own DAO. Right. So we can launch guilds where you work collectively to offer services. Right. So in this case, best for worker cooperatives or co-ops with small to medium financial throughput. Right. You pick the token, die, how many proposals do you want per day, 12 per day, voting period, five days for each proposal, grace period, two days to quit, I believe, proposal deposits, five die, Rewards to die, right? We can launch a club, which has little to no financial decisions. Basically, you hang with your friends and comrades to nerd out, nerd out or just chill, right? Ventures, which is what we'll be launching, invest on chain with a venture fund at your fingertips. Or you can have a grant style, spread around the wealth and accelerate good stuff. Or products, govern a product or protocol. Raid together to get products and products done in record time. All right, so we'll go to ventures. And they do have this quick start guide down here. 
which basically goes into more details in terms of what you're doing, right? So for example, yeah, so grace period is how long members can have to rage quit before a proposal is processed and basically made, made active, right? Then the deposit is used to protect against membership spam, right? So deposited by user when sponsoring a proposal, then return to their internal balance minus processing reward if applicable. Then reward used to reward members who process proposals. All right, so enough tutorials. So we can add multiple people to summon the DAO, or we can even go to hard mode, which shows you other details, right? So in this case, we have this contract. We have how many seconds per period. All right, so this is some advanced stuff here. Okay, all right, so now we're going to launch a venture DAO. I, I'm going to click summon. Now, actually, I've not done this before, so we'll see how this goes, how, it, how smooth it is. So I'm doing this via MetaMask. Confirm the transaction. Okay, so to launch this DAO, it's gonna cost me $355 in ETH. Okay, so transaction has been confirmed on my ledger via MetaMask. It is now processing. It says DAO is in the forge. Our magic, inter our magic internet communities take a minute or two to create. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, so we just sit tight for a few minutes and our DAO, our investment DAO. Oh, wow, so it's already done. A new DAO has risen. Configure the DAO. Okay, so now we have the ability to come here and add a name, description, purpose. So we'll say ventures, tags, community. Yeah, so this is all, all the social stuff. So basically, this I believe is for their for their profile and for exploring. But essentially, that is it. So now we have officially launched a DAO, an investment DAO, a venture DAO, using DAO House on the blockchain, right? So now what happens is we take the contract address. Uh, so here's blowed up. You can't see it, but you take this contract address, and then you go to your law attorney lawyer. And you put the contract smart contract address in the paperwork you filed with the state of Wyoming. Once you have that there, you are good. Your DAO is officially good to go. So now you can legally manage a DAO through DAO House on the blockchain to do whatever you want that is legally backed. And you can be private. Nobody will know you launched a DAO because the only people who know will be the state of Wyoming, and in their paperwork, they'll only have your attorney there and your registered, your, your agent, right? That basically collects all the legal filings and paperwork. So you could literally be anonymous legally and have a DAO. That is powerful. This is the future of disrupting investing, fundraising, grants, almost anything you want to do, you can launch a DAO and still be private in a legal manner in the US and even globally. Now, other regions I looked into for DAOs, I did talk to our attorneys in Switzerland, uh, but the issue over there, because for us, we we're trying to launch an investment DAO, uh, they told us they cap it at 20 members. Anything over 20 members for investing would then have to be regulated, and we wanted to have more than 20 people in the DAO, right? So with, with the US, you can have up to 100, I think it's 100, 100 or less. Right, but essentially, that is how you launch a DAO. So we talked about how DAOs are the future. We've delved into the different options with Wyoming, Delaware, and which one could be better. In my case, I think Wyoming is better for privacy and taxes. Uh, and then how to actually run and launch a DAO using DAO House. So tell me what you think. Uh, go out there and launch your own DAO and share, and share the DAO with me on Twitter. And as we like to say here, the moon is not the limit to the moon and beyond. <laughs>